Making a Stuart model steam plant, part 69. Fitting the steam piping from the Stuart 504 boiler to the Stuart 1010V and S50 steam engines. The steam manifold has three taps. I'm going to use two of these to supply steam to the engines. The third one is a spare. The third steam tap is going to be very useful for admitting compressed air to the boiler, as you will see later on in the episode. In this clip, I'm removing the temporary air adapter that I made from the end of the steam inlet manifold. And once that had been done, I just needed another adapter. Thankfully, I didn't need to make one. I had one in a box. It's a quarter by 32 threads per inch adapter. And here, as always, using my Barco spanner with the extra wide jaws, I'm tightening the adapter into place in the end of the steam manifold. And as always, I've used some Loctite 542 thread sealant on the adapter threads that screw into the steam manifold. I'm pretty sure this is not going to leak. When tightening fittings onto steam engines, particularly small ones, you have to be firm but gentle at the same time. These parts are not very strong, they're quite finely made, so you don't want to shear anything off. This is a microcosm, very small pipe bender, and it's really good for bending 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter pipe. This thread adapter from PM Research is a bit on the small side. I think it's designed for a thinner union nut. When I try this standard union nut in place, it does not tighten up properly. This would be no good at all as the steam cone would leak, and for that reason I removed the union nut and turned a little bit off it, so now it's a bit shallower. It needs a little cleaning up, but it doesn't bottom on the fitting anymore. A union nut is no good unless it puts positive pressure on the flange part of the union cone. This one is now OK, so it's pipe bending time. This section is running at a high speed, and it shows how many times I did a test fit of the pipe before I was happy that it was in the right place. Here's a finished kit of parts ready for silver soldering. Can you spot the deliberate mistake? After the silver soldering operation, once it had fully cooled and been quenched in water, I fitted the pipe from the tap to the steam engine. That was the easy part. Now it's time to bend a really long pipe from the steam tap all the way to the steam inlet of the S50. I use quite a long piece of pipe. Once again, it's 5 30 seconds of an inch in diameter or 4 millimeters. And each time I tried the pipe in place, I was very careful not to scratch the boiler. I will be giving the black part of the boiler another coat of paint, but I still do not want to scratch the surface with the end of the pipe. This clip shows how difficult it is. You can see where the pipe run is going to go. You can also clearly see that the pipe is a little bit too long. The last thing you want to do is run out of pipe right at the end of the job. This job took quite a while. The video is running at eight times normal speed. But eventually the time arrived to cut the end of the pipe to fit into the union cone on the steam inlet of the S50. To make sure I didn't get it wrong, I marked it using a needle file. There were one or two scratches already on the pipe and I certainly didn't want to cut on one of the wrong marks. But there could be no confusion with the deep groove left by the needle file. I cut the pipe and soldered union cones onto each end. As you can see, not forgetting to fit the nuts first. I was quite happy with the way the parts lined up. And as before, I'm using my Barco spanner to tighten the union nuts in place. This is the piping story so far. I just need to mention that pipe runs on a miniature steam plant are really important. I've seen a lot of nice plants thoroughly ruined by clumsy and stupidly positioned piping. For me, one useful rule is to make sure that the high pressure steam piping is low down on the plant where possible. That way, any operators are far less likely to burn the fingers because the steam inlet piping is very hot. With the inlet piping in place, I need to do a little bit of very careful bending to make the pipes line up. I'm not cleaning up the individual pipes. Once all the piping is done, they will be placed in the acid bath to clean them thoroughly. Now it's time for a compressed air test to make sure nothing leaks. I've fitted a piece of silicone rubber tubing and a spring clip, but unfortunately on this piece of pipe the spring clip was too big. 
Instead, I resorted to the usual method of using a cable tie to hold the pipe very securely to the steam tap. You can clearly see the piece of silicone rubber tubing expanding as I turn up the pressure. The whistle works and nothing is leaking. There is currently 50 pounds per square inch of compressed air in the boiler. Time to open the steam valve to send some of this compressed air to the Stuart 1010V. And off it goes. The engine's still a little bit on the tight side, but it runs quite well. As I move the reversing lever, the engine obviously changes direction. I'm not going to run the engine like this for long because it doesn't have a continuous oil supply. Thinking ahead, I'd already lubricated the engine even before I attached the piping to it. Now both of the steam engines are running and running well. Here's a bit of slow motion and as you can clearly hear, the 10 V engine is a bit of a rattler. I don't think there's much I can do about this. It's still a bit tight and it may get a bit quieter as it runs in. Don't forget these are not my engines, I haven't built them, they were supplied by the customer. It's time for me to go, I'll just leave the engines running for a short while to the end of the video. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.